My name is uh, Harold Colson. I'm a librarian at University of California, San Diego. Uh, I've selected today uh, John Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath. The reason I picked it is that this year is the 75th anniversary of its publication, and it touches upon themes of Route 66 and also uh, poverty in America. Chapter 21. The moving, questing people were migrants now. Those families which had lived on a little piece of land, who had lived and died on 40 acres, had eaten or starved on the produce of 40 acres, had now the whole West to rove in. And they scampered about, looking for work. The highways were streams of people, and the ditch banks were lines of people. Behind them were more coming. The great highways streamed with moving people. There, in the middle and southwest, had lived a simple agrarian folk who had not changed with industry, who had not farmed with machines, or known the power and danger of machines in private hands. They had not grown up in the paradoxes of industry. Their senses were still sharp to the ridiculousness of the industrial life. And then suddenly, the machines pushed them out and they swarmed on the highways. The movement changed them. The highways, the camps along the road, the fear of hunger, and hunger itself, changed them. The children without dinner changed them. The endless moving changed them. They were migrants, and the hostility changed them, welded them, united them. Hostility that made the little towns group an arm as though to repel an invader. Squads with pick handles, clerks and storekeepers with shotguns, guarding the world against their own people. In the West, there was panic when the migrants multiplied on the highways. Men of property were terrified for their property. Men who had never been hungry saw the eyes of the hungry. Men who had never wanted anything very much saw the flare of want in the eyes of the migrants. And the men of towns, of the towns, and of the soft suburban country gathered to defend themselves. And they re reassured themselves that they were good and the invaders bad, as a man must do before he fights. They said, these goddamn Okies were dirty and ignorant. They're degenerate sexual maniacs. These goddamn Okies are thieves. They'll steal anything. They've got no sense of property rights. And the latter was true. For how can a man without property know the ache of ownership? And the defending people said, they bring disease, they're filthy. We can't have them in our schools, they're strangers. How'd you like to have your sister go out with one of them? The local people worked themselves into a mold of cruelty. They formed units, squads, with, and armed them. Armed them with clubs, with gas, with guns. We own the country. We can't let these Okies get out of hand. And the men who were armed did not own the land, but they thought they did. And the clerks who drilled at night owned nothing. And the little storekeepers possessed only a drawer full of debts. But even a debt is something. Even a job is something. The clerk thought, I get $15 a week. Suppose a goddamn Okie would work for 12. And the little storekeeper thought, how can I compete with a debtless man? And the migrants streamed in on the highways. And their hunger was in their eyes. And their need was in their eyes. They had no argument, no system, nothing but their numbers and their needs. When there was work for a man, 10 men fought for it, fought with a low wage. If that fellow will work for 30 cents, I'll work for 25. If he'll take 25, I'll do it for 20. No, me, I'm hungry. I'll work for 15. I'll work for food. The kids, you ought to see them. Little boils like coming out, and they can't run around. Give them some windfall fruit, and they bloat it up. Me, I'll work for a little piece of meat. And this was good for wages went down and prices stayed up. The great owners were glad and they sent out more handbills to bring more people in. And wages went down and prices stayed up. And pretty soon now, we'll have serfs again. And the companies, the banks, worked at their own doom. And they did not know it. The fields were fruitful and, they did not, and starving men moved on the roads. The granaries were full. And the children of the poor grew up rachitic. And the pustules of pellagra swelled on their sides. The great companies did not know that the line between 
hunger and anger is a thin line. And money that might have gone to wages went, to, went for gas, for guns, for agents and spies, for blacklists, for drilling. On the highways, the people moved like ants and searched for work, for food, and the anger began to ferment.